Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to the vlog. Okay. <laughs> I feel like we haven't talked in a while. Like I've been talking at y'all, but we ain't really like talked. So what's going on? What's going on in your world? Let me know in the comments, okay? What y'all been up to, okay? How's life been treating you, okay? This video is long overdue. This is a recap of Power, um, whatever the last episode was, the fifth episode. Okay, so let's get into it. They've been on break. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that the next um, Power Book 3, I guess it is, Power Book 3, whatever, um, has finished up filming. So they didn't, it's a wrap on the filming, and I believe that it's supposed to be coming back on in December which I'm excited for. I hope there's um, going to be a lot more action. Like this five episodes were cool. You know, it was like a little warm up. But like I'm used to a season being 10 episodes long. So if y'all haven't canceled 50 Cent, <laughs> I know y'all are in y'all feelings because he said he's voting for Trump. Which I don't understand. The man is doing what's best for him. Talk about, oh, he's voting for Trump. Trump is going to raise taxes. Trump said he's going to raise taxes. I believe, what did he say? He's raising taxes on um, people who earn $400,000 a year or more. And half of y'all, that's not your category. Like, you, I don't even know why you're worried. The man is doing what's right for him. But anyway... Let's get into this little recap, y'all. I didn't take notes from, like, when the episode first came out. And, um, yeah. So, in the beginning of that episode, y'all, um, Tasha is having, like, a little flashback where she sees Raina. I don't really understand the purpose of that. I wrote down that they could have saved the little flashback. Um, I put Tamika is aggravating. What did Tamika do? I should have rewatched it before... <laughs> I'm just kind of going off my notes, but I'll be jotting down stuff. Like, I'll watch the episode and jot down some notes. So, Tamika is aggravating. If y'all know why she aggravated, make sure you leave it in the comments. I don't know why my hair is itching like this. I probably need to, like, I don't know. It's the weather. But I put Tamika is aggravating. Okay, so Monet thinks she knows everything. That's the whole vibe that I'm getting from Mary. Like, Mary... I don't know like at first I was excited to see her in the first couple of episodes and now it's just kind of like she's giving me that angry black woman vibe and I'm not here for it okay um and I wish that they would just let Diana's character go to school because she is not that bright she really isn't she she needs to go to school because she's she's not that smart clearly like <laughs> Because um, the streets just ain't for her, okay? She she don't got the street smarts. And her mama knows that. Like, she just don't have it. Um, so, in the next clip, you see Monet, like, trying to school. You see Monet, Monet trying to school um, Diana on how to, like keep a man in control and she just dogging Ramirez at the door trying like you know you got to keep him on a short lease and I'm just like Monique Monet be treating Ramirez like it really ain't no thin line between love and hate like this man loves you now but you treat him like he ain't nothing you think that he won't switch up on you he's already a dirty cop and I feel like he is gonna switch up because I re remember when Tyreek was like asking questions about Ramirez and like why your mom hanging around a dirty cop and what is the cop getting from her or what is she getting from him and um Kane was like I don't know they always come to, to kill still or um you know whatever Kane has said they come to do and I feel like that's was the dynamic of Ramirez and Monet's relationship if we get to continue to see the relationship I feel like that is what is going to turn into because Monet is just like so mean to this man and you know he feeling her like girl you don't gotta be so mean and um yeah so <clears throat> that leads into the next clip where you see that Kane feels that Ramirez is overstepping his boundaries he wants to know why Monet lets him do it and you know Monet's like oh I got my foot on his neck ain't no worries and I'm just like girl 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, I just spilled, I just missed my mouth completely. <laughs> if that was wine, I would have made it. But no, we're drinking water today, y'all. <gasps> Balance is key. I had some wine yesterday, so I'm going to drink some water today. But, um, yeah. In the next clip, we see that Ra Sax is just, like, ruthless, y'all. Sax don't have no coof. He has no chill. Sax be doing whatever he feels like he needs to do in order to win the case. And he's just messy. And I'm... How many of y'all think that Sax is going to end up getting killed? And who do you think he's going to get killed by? I, I, my theory is that Tariq is going to ask the Tejadas, like ask Monet and them for some help in order to get rid of Sax. Because at this point, Sax is now met, you know, Tariq has gotten um, the Tejadas mixed up into his business. And Sax is keeping an eye on Tariq. So at this point, it's like... Sax is now entering into the Tejada's ter territory, entering into their business, and they're going to have to help him settle that because now they could be in trouble, you know? Basically, so I feel like it's either going to be between Tariq or Kane or um, Drew having to go ahead and take um, Sax out. Sax is going to have to die. They be killing everybody on this show. Sax is next. But um, when Therese says, um, you want me to take care of her, to his mom when he was talking about Tamika, I was like, oh my goodness, like Therese, <laughs> Therese is a killer. Like, what do you mean, do you want me to take care of her? She was like, whoa, nah, son, like, <laughs> chill. And then go call him and say, yo, go ahead and handle that. Like, Tasha, like, y'all all, y'all. <laughs> What type of life are y'all living where y'all just be like, yeah, handle that? Like it's some light work, okay. But um, Jabari, he speaks a good game, but I don't want to say that he doesn't walk it. Because I, I can't, like, at first I was liking Jabari's character, then I was not liking Jabari. I go back and forth with Jabari. And the thing is, is like, the reason why I go back and forth with him is because I want to like him, but then he does something that I don't like, you know? But then it's like, I can forgive him for doing the things that I don't like because his character shows us that no one is perfect. Like, we've all fallen short in the eye of the Lord, okay? And that's what his character shows us. It shows us, his character shows me that he wants to be this person. He strives to be this person. And he is this person sometimes. But at other times, he just falls short. And we all do. And it's just kind of refreshing to see someone like that in the show. You know, because no one's perfect. Everyone has their good side, their bad side. All the characters do. But it seems like Jabari's um, character is really um, in the forefront. And you can really see his uh downfalls you know because he's struggling with his book and it was his, 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 his third book <laughs> he's struggling with his new book so everyone knows that in the next clip everyone knows that drew is gay and his advice that he gave Tariq to me um Tariq, here comes royalty hey don't be busting in my room but his advice that he gave Tariq, i feel like was good advice when he said listen Monet is just testing you and you need to look out for yourself. And I was like, yeah, period. Like, you really do need to look out for yourself because... Which <clears throat> is funny that Drew said that says this to him because Tariq felt like his dad was looking out for um, only himself. You remember he felt that his dad was selfish and that's the reason why he... Um, a part of the reason why he decided that he needed to murder his father. And now you have Drew who grew, who's grown up in this same type of family or situation as Tariq hey hey could you not hey could you come get her I'm trying to film the whole video thank you <laughs> close my door please what was I saying 
Okay, and then you have Tariq, who's grown up in the same type of similar, very similar situation. And um, he doesn't want to be like his dad, but he, uh, it seems like his life and the circumstances are pushing him into the person that he swears he does not want to be, who he isn't, and all that extra stuff. So, um, yeah, um, Hennessy and Hypnotic. <laughs> I wrote down Hennessy and Hypnotic. Have y'all ever tried an Incredible Hawk? Yeah, I had an Incredible Hawk when I was in New Orleans, and I ended up at this male strip club having the time of my freaking life, y'all. I was so freaking lit. I remember the male dancer, like, grabbed my friend out of the audience. She had crochet braids in her hair. And he grabbed her out of the audience and <laughs> was doing something wild with her. Like, it was crazy. Like, he was flipping her all with your ways. And then he pulled her hair, y'all. And one of the braids came out. And he threw it in the audience. And I caught that bitch. <laughs> I caught it like it was a wedding bouquet. And I was just swinging it like, yeah. 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 I need to get out. I miss that life. I need to go back on vacation. I need another little mini vacation. I need to get lit. Um, but yeah, I fucks with Brayden. That's what I wrote down. I fucks with Brayden. Yes, I like Brayden. So, Jabari. Next scene. I must have been talking about that scene when I, because I said I fucks with Brayden. It must have been when Brayden was throwing a party and um, he was asking um, Zeke to bring some girls. Y'all, oh, did, how would y'all feel about that sex scene between Zeke and um, Professor Milgram? Mm. But anyway, we'll get there. So Jabari speaks to his um, agent. Is it his agent? And and, who, and his agent says if his next book doesn't sell, he's dropped. And Jabari tries to pull the race card, talking about, oh, this is how you're going to do your brother. And I was just like, I cannot stand. Especially in this age where we have so many black entrepreneurs, so many black businesses. Did y'all did y'all watch um, 20s on Showtime? Is it on Showtime? But anyways, um, Lena Waithe, the producer and uh, writer, co-writer of... Um, Grammy Award winning filmmaker Lena Waithe. Um, she has this show called 20s, which I don't feel like a lot of people, y'all sleeping on 20s. 20s is a good show. But in one of the episodes, there's this character named Hattie. And Hattie's like, she's a gay, she's gay. But like, I love her vibe. Like, she's so me. But I'm not gay. But she's so me. Like, we have very similar personalities. But anyway, Hattie says that um, she supports good businesses that happen to be black. And I was like, period. Okay, period. I don't care that you're a black. I'm not going to support you because you're a black business. I'm going to support you because you're a good business that happens to be black. Okay, let's just get that straight. And that's how I felt when Jabari was like, okay, brother. And I was like, bro, step up your game. Yo, he ain't trying to brain on your parade he, he's just telling you that you can do better he know you can do better and he ain't taking nothing but better from you period just like you keep on trying to you know jabari keeps trying to preach to Tariq. his agent basically said the same thing to him but you know people's little egos be needing to be stroked because they be hurt feelings be hurt when you be hearing that type of stuff i mean it is what it is but um tasha tells Tariq to go talk to tamika i think Tariq was going to kill her first because she offered something to, uh, first when she offered him something to drink and then she get, <laughs> oh, that's what I wrote down. I'm like, I'm reading it like, what am I talking about? I said, I thought Tariq was going to kill her. Not, uh, not because he wanted her to be quiet, but because she had offered him something to drink and gave him some faucet water. I was like, why did you not give this boy a bottle of water? You already said it's been a long way. You know he ran all the way over here from the city. Because <laughs> he don't got a car. 
But yeah, y'all, she offered him some faucet water. I was like, yeah, take her out. When I seen that, I was like, yeah, knock her off, man. She tripping. She playing games. She really playing in your face offering you some faucet water. But um, Drew's little friend was acting mad funny. Like, every, I wrote down, Everett's a little bitch. Like, in a world where I didn't understand why they put that part into the um, show when being gay has been normalized in my opinion i don't know i have a gay best friend and we've been best friends since i think since like 10th or 11th grade like me and my friend kelly my my friend kelly and i and it's it's nothing to me like i don't i i don't you know that's that's not how I describe her. I don't even know why I, I said I described her that way because we're talking about gay people, but um, it has been normalized to me. Like you know, it's nothing. That's your sexual orientation. Who am I to judge? Like I don't. That's not none of any of my business. You know, I'm not judging you off of that. Let's just say that. But I feel like I didn't understand why it was such a big issue that. For Everett to hide his sexuality. And I was just like. Oh, he's a little bitch for that. And especially like. When Drew is so open about his. Like everyone knows about Drew. Drew is still a thug. And he, you know like. And he's still who is who he is. And he's comfortable with that. And it just. I just didn't like that part of the show. Where Everett was acting like that. I'm like nobody cares that you're gay. Like. I'm going to be more upset that you're trying to hide it and that you're ashamed of it than I will be if you just came out and said you were gay and owned it. You feel me? So, um, Carrie says that she's not Jabari's muse anymore. You know, when um, Jabari was like, I need help writing my book. I'm in here shopping for shoes when I was supposed to be writing my book. Can you come help me? And I was like, ooh. But you know what? I don't even be liking those sex scenes between Carrie and Jabari, so. <laughs> I don't even know why I was a little bit excited when he asked, but I was like, uh, eh. so what do y'all who do y'all think? So now Tariq is his new muse because he's been using Tariq's work. And that's not even gonna work. I was like, this is so fraudulent. He needs to delete all of this and start over. Or he needs to find him a new muse. Like I don't know why people, I guess I kind of used to be like this so hard on moving on. Like, I would be so stuck on one person. Now I'd be excited. Like, what is the new person going to show me? What am I going to learn? Like, you know, like what are new experiences, what new memories am I going to have? That's exciting to me versus just trying to hold on to something that's dead, you know? But, um... <sighs> What did I say? I said somebody is is a mess. What's that girl's name? I was talking about. I wrote her. I, I can't read my hand right in. <laughs> Sax's um, niece is a freaking mess. Cause she is. But yo, y'all. So Zeke finally gets them draws from Carrie. Mm. I don't know. Like, it's just hilarious because I didn't think that Zeke was gonna get it because Carrie wasn't interested in him and I feel like she's still not interested in him she was just bored which <laughs> girl I'm like girl don't be just doing stuff because you bored but yeah she um slept with him because she was bored basically and she was trying to avoid Jabari okay so she's trying to she's bored and she needs to fill a void and that's the only reason why Zeke got some and I think that Zeke is gonna double back for more um, just because she's kind of being, um, she's kind of pushing him away. She doesn't really want him. And, you know, Zeke's mom, he had an issue with his mom. He had an issue with his dad, that abandonment, you know, um, that happened to him. I feel like him wanting uh, Professor Milgram and her not really wanting him back is a game for him like he's gonna keep on coming after her until you know he feels like you know until she either cuts it off with him or 
he just gets to the point that she really doesn't want him but i feel like that's what that whole situation was about yeah he liked her and all that extra stuff but he don't really want professor milgram so um yeah hmm, diana takes therese gun she's so clueless when, when she did that i was like why did she do that and then she was so jealous i was like first of all monet thinks she's so smart why would you even send diana like if Tariq knows that you already sent Kane to try to check him and you check Kane and then you tried to send Drew and you're not giving Drew any information, how do you think, why do you think that Diana is going to uh, win him over? And Diana is so pressed. Like, she, she's not even hiding it. She's like, yeah, I just came here for your birthday. Like, oh, I can't celebrate your birthday with you? And I'm just like, girl. You gotta do you gotta you gotta do better than that you gotta do <laughs> gotta be quicker than that <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> but yeah so yeah i already put jabari tried to use his work <clears throat> jabari tries to use to reach work as his own and then i that's when i was thinking like we be giving people too much credit like we really do we give people way too much credit just off of the strength of I don't know what. We give people way too much credit too soon when we're all we're all just ordinary people. Whoever made that song said it best. So <clears throat> when Tariq goes to um Raina's grave and <clears throat> It remembers how he stood there and let her get killed and he talks about um killing ray ray wasn't enough i was kind of like bro like you really did like you so tough now but you really did stand there and let your sister get killed i know that's like how the show had to go on but okay you did and then you wanted to kill ray ray like he's just been a mess every he's just been messy ever since y'all but um i don't know uh, how his character is going to develop you know is he going to finish college because he's barely finished he's barely making it in college is he going to turn into who his dad was i feel like he probably is um <clears throat> and monet so monet's calling causing a problem with Tariq and kane and drew can see it okay drew already knows what monet is doing but monet is caught when monet when monet told kane to give drew his burner i mean give Tariq his burner you know yeah monet because y'all know i begin names mixed up let me get this right when monet told kane to give Tariq his burner and Kane was like, he probably don't even know how to use it. You know, the little nigga probably don't even know how to use it. I was like, why is Monet being messy like this? Like, why are you causing a, some rip between the two of them? Like, it's not cute, you know? But yeah, y'all, moving on to David. So David's ain't shit. And the deal he made with Sax, is it real or is it a setup? I, I don't know. Like, I know that David's, like, we don't know too much about davis either you know we we still haven't his character hasn't been developed enough for us to kind of gauge what type of move he'll make like once we see the move that he makes after this then we can kind of um gauge his character only thing that we have to go off of is um, that dinner when carrie says that uh sometimes a win for uh davis davis wins his, wins his case but it isn't always a win for his client so I'm like, what does that mean? Is that a telltale that the deal that Davis just made with Sax is in fact a real deal? Or like, I don't know, y'all. I want it to not be real, okay? Yeah, I want it to just be like a setup. But it's hard for me to believe that it is a setup. What are y'all thoughts on it? That is all I got to say for this recap. Y'all, let me know what you think is going to happen in the next five episodes of um, Power. I'm excited to see it, y'all. I'm probably about to go and re-watch the episode now because now I just want to, like, 
I want to see it. But yeah, y'all. It's been real. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. All that good stuff. All that good stuff. Y'all be easy. Until the next vlog. Peace.